Okay, so I figured it out. Turn that on here a little bit. So yesterday I had a clusterfuck with the game crashing every time I tried streaming. Although sometimes I would last a couple minutes, but still wouldn't do it. Well, for some reason, current versions of things. The Twitch Studio Beta did not like streaming Final Fantasy, so. But when I come over here to OBS, everything's fine and dandy. So we're using that. That's fancy. So yesterday we had a little thing saying Skolark Maltashain had stopped by the uh, Baltasian Annex uh, to say hi, and we're basically going to find him. Here it is, phenomenon. Ah, oh, shit. Well, most of the space is taken up by the expensive auditoriums, it also houses numerous laboratories, testing grounds for experimental magics, and a host of administrative offices and so forth. As the center of what would become later become the studium, it is established to promote the study of etiological phenomena, hence the name. Though, with an ether being a fundamental aspect of nature, its scope expanded to include every conceivable facet of life and even the universe itself. And then in the 432nd year of the Sixth Astral Era, Phenomenon was decreed complete and the studium officially opened as a place of learning. With a long and storied history, is without question the world's leading authority in aetherology. The arcane, the occult, astronomy, and countless other fields, standing proud as Shalian's foremost educational institution. <laughs> you always did enjoy giving the grand tour to new students. Indeed, he has long since lost track of how many times he has recited the same foppish speech, such as his undying love for his old stamping ground. He was in top form back then, youngest to enter the studium, graduated in highest honors in magical arts and aetherology, undisputed champion of the debating chamber. Hold on, you both joined the studium at the same age, yes? And from where I stand, you are equally prejudicial scholars. Nice, nice of you to say, but Alphado actually entered half a year before me, nor did I do well enough to graduate with honors, and is certainly not the studium's most notorious master debater. In all respects have I ever been in his shadow. If nothing else, just remember that this is where the legend of Alphenor Levia began. We should expect every we should expect everyone to be fully aware of our recent ex escapades. Hopefully we will be somewhat more welcome here than we were at the last stand. I know better than anyone the adoration the student body ha body has for Alphenor, and with a bit of luck it might work to our advantage. Well, there's no time like the present. First things first, let's look for Skolak Montoshain. Other fa faculty tend to frequent their office, but unfortunately for us, he's found fond of wandering where, wheresoever his whims take him. Let's spin up and ask the students if they've seen them. And of course, I will find them, and they'll just happen to show up just as I find him and start talking to him. <laughs> That, that, that was Alphino Levior, wasn't it? The Alphino Levior! And he's with his sister and Master Baldessian's granddaughter. This could only mean one thing. An event of epoch-shattering 
I shatter your proportions as fast approaching. Spread the word! Um, I'm looking for a skull arc, Matashane. Oh, sorry, you said you were looking for the skull arc, yes. No, a name could be anywhere, but Miss Elipo should have a better idea. Put it through the doors! Are you lost? Wandering off the street, perhaps? Wait, don't tell me. You're a trainee gleaner fresh off the guild ship. I'm right, aren't I? Oh, how silly of me, an orientation disorder. <clears throat> Allow me to bid you a warm welcome to the searcher's meet. meet. Let me start with the question. What is the most important thing you'll find in the studio? That's right, books. And what's the second most important? Why, that's simply everything else. That's what we deal with here at Searcher's Meet. Whatever the students and teachers find themselves in need of equipment or materials, they come to us. If we don't have it in our stores, we send off the send the cleaners off to find it. Honestly, we wouldn't believe some of the requests we get. I apprise this, this, tongue of giant toad that. It's enough to make your hair stand on end, which is probably what some of our students are trying to accomplish accomplish this being a school of magic and all as our newest cleaner you have your work cut out for you and i think you will find it quite rewarding the only thing i'm interested in gleaning is information on the sclark's whereabouts i beg your pudding uh, you're not a gleaner then this it was was all a lever cruise? No, nope, wait, come to think of it, you never actually claimed to be in be one in the first place. My mistake. He was here, but now he's not. I did speak with him shortly before you arrived though. He said he was on his way to the maker's meet. Go back the way you came and you'll see it in the opposite side of the entrance. It's a lab laboratory of sorts. How many rare and expensive curios, not to mention alarmingly frequent accidents. If you lose your way, just follow the blood curdling screams. <laughs> In the time it's taken me to tell you all this, the scholar probably already left. Best of luck finding him. I have a feeling you're gonna need it. Yes, the scholar came in here a short while ago. He offered me advice on a current research project. Though we spoke for though we spoke at length, I don't recall him mentioning where he was planning to go next. When we parted ways, he went down the corridor, perhaps to one of the auditoriums. I pray we have not caught you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. Well, I could hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. 
A slender majority, aye, but a majority nonetheless. Had the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation, if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less doer setting. But it seems I just missed you. I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the Forum. Why, it fair brought a tear to my own eye. You must have the patience of a saint, putting up with this lot and their antics. Never mind Matoya's prize student. Yeah. Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. Wink. <laughs> See, Kral gets the joke. If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. How is that even possible? <laughs> it's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. Class is in session. <clears throat> we shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul, and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? See, how smart is Emma Ghost? Corporeal say he's at least smart enough to know that. Yes, very good. This is the form with which the layman is most familiar. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. In contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. Picture the soul as paper, and memories as words written upon it. Welcome to the something. Now. What would happen if that paper was doused with ink? The same type of ether as comprises the memories.
It would blot out everything that was written. Precisely. We would be unable to recall the memories. And any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? The Seventh Umbral Calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the Lesser Moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. But no one could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Indeed, to this day we have yet to determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. The enchantment which binds me and the rest of the Forum is based on a similar principle. And yes, it is a contravention of the Charlien prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. Only when a new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. A necessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. Barring that, we must wait until we return to the Ethereal Sea. For there we will be purified, the blots upon our souls washed clean. and our memories drift apart and dissolve. Rather defeating the purpose, I suppose. But there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. Alternative schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world, reborn into another form. Both theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Well, I think that's enough education for today, now that I've given you some food for thought. Or rather, an entire banquet. I would remind you that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters, the resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. I'll arrange for you all to be given the run of Phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Oh! And I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian, and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all the best in your pursuits, wheresoever they may take you.
He said alternative thoughts uh, regarding the soul being staying whole and being reborn. Well, it's partially true in some sense. This top has been securely hit. Take it off. Um, considering that we're eight, nine, fourteenths of a of a Zen, or the yeah. Uh, of Azam from the Convocation of 14. Carl is still digesting a rather hefty portion of food thought. Well, that's given us much to mull over. I feel as though we are one step closer to understanding the form's true motives. The mysteries of life itself, for good measure. It's funny, I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude, only to leave more indebted than before. I'm feeling his friendship and support will be a great boon to us in days to come. And on that note, let's head back to the Annex. Perhaps on the way you can better acquaint yourself with Kia Alipo, as the Skolak suggested, while I share our findings with Raha. Sadly, I can't because I don't have crafters that are in gatherers that are uh, at a high enough level. Uh, she has the speed in blurries. So we'll just return to the Baltasian Annex. Ah, oh, welcome back. From what I hear, your trip to the studio proved most educational. While you were away, I received words from our fellow science. As expected, news of the warning scales has met with such joy. Preparations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Our friends have asked that we bring the scales in our possession to the Limsa. So the time has come for, for us to go on the offensive. It's too early to say for certain, but that does seem to be a way that the winds are blowing. I, for one, can think of no reason to oppose such a plan, but let us see what awaits us in Vilburn. Let's start by getting the scales out of storage. Give me a hand, wouldn't you, Stidian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phew, I didn't realize these crates were so heavy. I shouldn't complain though. Fritra and the uh, alchemists of the great work put their heart and soul into each and every one of those scales, so we must treat them with the utmost care. Coffee's still hot. You'd probably think of this insulated cup. Are you not coming with us? As much as I'd like to escape the phone's watchful gaze, there's little choice but to stay behind. We are already at, we're already on thin ice, and I, in my capacity as an official representative, we're found to be consorting found to be consorting with foreign powers. Well, you can imagine how that would go. I shall remain here and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more feathers as I await word from Master Matoya and our other allies. With luck, we'll soon have good news of our own to share. The tide is about to turn. I can feel it. Glimpsa Liminsa.
As I was, ah, I was told to expect you. As you may may or not be aware, the admiral is present in, in it, present. The admiral is present in the tiny deal, the Sea and Sultana. Three of the most powerful women in the world in one room. Do you need a moment to prepare, or should I show you to them? Yeah, let's go in. Yeah, I'm friends with them. It's fine. My apologies for for calling you all away from Charlie in such no short notice. On the contrary, we are honoured and grateful and pleasantly surprised to be joined by such esteemed company. Twas only right that this discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a ward of attrition. Our forces struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers, and it is only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Victory will only be claimed through decisive action, and we have taken the initiatives to set the wheels in motion. It is reassuring to learn that you are all in accord. Might I ask what your plan entails? It hinges entirely on the boarding skills and our ability to utilize their potential to the fullest. During your time in Charlian, the Allied nations have been engaged in separate fronts with no end in sight. To make matters worse, the surge in the abductions of Kobold, Sahagan, Ixel, and Ananta have given rise to an increasing number of primals. But your triumph in Radzahan has given us cause to hope once more. The time has come to free ourselves from this menace. It is you, the signs of the Seventh Dawn, who have shown us the way. While the bulk of our forces will continue to hold the Telophoroi at bay, we will dispatch our finest to strike the enemy's heart, Garlemald. These brave he these brave few will be the Ildbar contingent. To think such progress has been made in so short a span. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tempered. Robbed of their free will, they serve the Telophorus every whim without question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering. Not, not for strategic or political gain, because it is the right thing to do. I do not ask that you set aside the decades of conflict and conquest that we simply choose to forgive and forget. I ask only that in choosing to remember, remember we do not also forsake our compassion and morality. For without that there can be no reconciliation, only death without end. Aye, on that we can all agree. Our second objective is the colossal tower that Thancred and Orionje observed in the capital. Though its purpose remains unclear, it's reason to be believe the smaller spires are merely a precursor to what's yet to come. Until the Tower of Zot was toppled, we, were, we failed to make any headway through the city, though the same could be said, said of the Telophore. There's certainly no rush to press further into our lands. I'd wager the spy's primary purpose is to divide and keep us occupied while they work towards an, an, our annihilation. This would appear to be substantiated by Yishtola's analysis of the tower's influence on ethereal currents. Based on her observation inside the Tower of Zot, the spires siphon ether from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than is required for this task alone. The access of ether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure that it is not being harnessed for our benefit. It wouldn't surprise me in the least, it is being redirected to the largest buyer in the capital. That's a lot there's a logic in that. 
Regardless, once we have uncovered the truth, we'll bring those schemes crashing down along with their infernal towers. Well, that's all well and good. And what would you have us do? I assume it's more than hand handing over the scales and being on our way. We want you and your scales to join the Eldabard contingent. Consider it an official request from both the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Perhaps you should be the one to answer that. I'm a little pissed at the Lafrey. Couldn't have put it better myself. Yustola, thank her to Yonji of our privilege of support and are on their way to meet the rest of the continued. They are positive you would come with the same decision as they did. Luckily, for all involved, their prediction was correct. Once you have delivered the world in scales to Alamigo, the contingent will embark on its journey to Ilzabad. Ravon and Lord Emric are overseeing preparations, so I suggest you make yourselves known upon arrival. Pack warm clothing, furs and the like. Without it, the cold will do you in before the Telofroy, uh, so much as draw steel. As for us, we will keep the enemy busy while you are gone. They are not the only ones who can create a diversion. Now go. See for the knowledge, Eorzea will be, be as you left it, or better, upon your return. So what's this whole Ildspar contingent? Have you played it, th played through it a couple times? Uh, I already know, but I'll let, let you find out. And if you're watching this and you haven't played through it and you want to avoid spoilers, what are you watching this for? Anyways, moving on. Ah, the Wanderers return. You've been busy bringing down a tower and producing the keys to destroy the rest of them. You should be proud. Those warding scales of yours are what made this whole venture possible. Will you and Lord Emmerich be leading the contingent? Regrettably, no. Our role is to organize the various delegations into a cohesive unit. Once we have seen you all off, it's back to our respective posts. We dare not neglect our duties for too long, lest our defensive efforts fall into disarray. And just between us, there's far, there are far amount of opposition in the formation of the Kildredom. The Ilzabad contingent. The very suggestion that we send out some of our finest troops behind enemy lines in, to render aid onto the Guardians has made me rather unpopular in certain quarters. <laughs> Can't please, the, please them all. Sadly not, though I do my best. Truth be told, I'd r much rather be at your side, charging into the fray. Last, I've battles of my own to fight. Words may serve me better than any blade. I hate to say it, but Lord Emmerich's struggles mirror my own. For the first time, you know, for the time being, the best we can offer is the peace of mind from knowing Eorzea is in safe hands. As you fight, the good fight knows about. I and the other commanders will do whatever we can to convince the naysayers that our cause is just. Thank you, both of you. We meet again. Word of your exploits travels quickly. From what I gather, the protective talismans you obtained led to the formation of this expedition in his force. 
Your contributions on this occasion is but a minor one. It's been the that being the information I have shared with Maxima, for the sake of the people of Garlemond, may the fates be on your side. So you're not coming with us? Strange. I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do. The Talafrae have laid waste my homeland and enslaved my people. And though every moat of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to deliver it. My presence alone would place the entire mission in jeopardy. I stand accused of murdering Emperor Varus and plunging Garlemald into chaos. Were I to travel in with the Ilzabar contingent, I would give my countrymen ample cause to question my motives. Conversely, those who believe me innocent may instead celebrate the return of a former Legatus and attempt to raise me to a position of leadership, further destabilizing the region and complicating the contingent's mission. Whether I'm branded a villain or hailed a hero, I would only hinder your efforts. I doubt there will be pleased to see the champion of AR <laughs> curling in the soil. Fair point. But so long as you refrain from announcing your arrival to all in, all in sundry, the average person should have no inkling as to your identity. Though your title and deeds are common knowledge, only a few would recognize you as on sight alone. Perhaps one day they will learn that the Warrior of Light is not a demon to be feared, but a man deserving of their trust. Light of Guys is rather unique circumstances. I instead will assume the role as your guide. Though I may have defected from a pl for political reasons, my love for Garlemon does. I would stop at nothing to protect her and her people. Well said. Might I ask you to escort our friends inside? Might even bump into an old acquaintance or two. And that if you, and if I don't see you again, though you depart, may the fury guide and protect you, all of you. Level 83. Yes, we're just level 83. The other members of the Elzebar contingent are gathered in the Royal Palace. I shall inform them of your arrival, so make please make your way inside as soon as you're ready. Ah, the remaining members of the science. Your friends and most of the Elzebar contingent await you within. Would you like me to see you through? Yes. Normal guard talk. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. As you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. Tis a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzabad contingent. The two on the left are from Bard. Indeed, Sicard. which is why oh, I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades, yourselves included. Lucia. I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. 
Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone! If I may have your attention. This has a lot of references to uh, the job quests, as well as uh, old MSQ people we've run into. Might I ask you to speak first? If I must, I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer, we shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself accompanying us as well, those requiring more involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the way. I have leveled. Suppose I'd better say my thing. peace. Wait, I know you. The name's Sickard. In case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. Any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, he picked me. <laughs> of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a keyhole in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you gotta trust in the commander of your ship. So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go, but then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Eldin's behest. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. I love this. Huh? Looks over there already, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. And then we might finally get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. 
The four high houses, House Hylinart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature, together with the smiths of Limpsa Lomitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Emanolaine? Ah, yes. Uh, Emanolaine de Fourton, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of light. May your practicing lead the way to victory, or I dare say your fancy footwork may be what stands between us and certain doom. <laughs> How sarcastic do I want to be? <laughs> May your graceful prancing lead the way to victory. <laughs> Huzzah! I cannot wait to regale on a roi with my tales of daring do. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Out of my way, you preening fool! <laughs> Forgive us for coming late. We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Sirena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as a step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma, only to find them beyond our reach. But now our thirst for slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe. We've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are... Members of the Dalmascan Resistance Group, Lente's Tears. And the Bosnian Resistance. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage, and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities. Which is fortuitous, since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Dalmasca, Bosia, Alamigo. All lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Tilophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. 
But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Garleans, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. For Dola, who once swore herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial Defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Maxima, who stands with us today, tried to reform Garlemald from within and make peace with Joma. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Garlean capital in northern Ilsabad, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacias. From there, we must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. The vast ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us. So it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. We cannot account for every possibility, so we must be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested. Sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. Spare no effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back. All right, so let's take it to her. There's a lot of people here, uh, a lot of references. I will explain them all. If it will. Load. Oh, jeez. I don't know if it's the coffee or my heater, but I'm getting more comfortable. There we go. Could also be the headphones, I don't know. All right. So I'm gonna to talk to you, Stola, here for, quickly. Besides the delegates assembled here, the Imajo and several other tribes offered to send troops of their own. Unfortunately, due to their physiology, many would struggle simply to survive. in the harsh climate of Ildabad. They would also pr likely prove tempting targets for abductions by the Telophoroi. All the things considered, they make it better aid the cause for by bolstering our defenses in Eorzea. 
though their eagerness to do more has been noted. We few shall have to suffice. Ere we embark, we will distribute the warding scales to our comrades. Care to do the honors? Alright. So we did the tour. We'll just go ahead and start with Lucia. Warding scales for the Ishkadian delegation, I take it. Many thanks. These talismans may prove to be the deciding factor in the battles to come. I find myself conflicted by this foray into Galamond, sent by the Empire to infiltrate Ish Ishgard only to throw my lot with those whose secrets I was supposed to be stealing. And now I lead a mission to save the countrymen I betrayed. But that is doubtless why I was chosen by Lord Emmerich. He would have me put my extensive knowledge and former ties to good use. I will not disappoint him. For the future of this Ishgard, Garlemont, and the world at large, I would lead us to victory. Okay, <coughs> so let's start off with the Ishgard uh, contingent. Albrecht here is our host our, our, uh, for Dragoon. So once you get up to level 30, you send to Albrecht uh, to start your job quests and uh, get your job zones to be a dragoon. Let me have a look at you. Touch another stand to the battlefield, perhaps? Well, I shall be out there alongside you as a temple knight. You as a temple knight serving with your with your fine van. Though I may not look it, I was the Azure Dragoon once upon a time. So you can rest assured that I will give all that that I have in the coming fight. I certainly won't be shown up by you or Estinian. Stephaninvinian. Stephaninvinian. Blah, 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 blah. He is our machinist contact. So at level 30 after hitting level 50 and getting to Ishgard, he is the one who um, gives us our job stone as well as he's our contact. We meet him on the phone for... If it isn't Amicos... It's thanks to no small part to you that the manufactory's future is looking brighter than ever, my friend. I am pleased to report that I, I and a handful of my colleagues have been selected to join the contingent. And the expedition has ended. Even the Temple Knights will be singing our machinist praises. Once they have borne witness to not only our mechanical proficiency, but our combat prowess too. Too, of course. Alright, so... We got Dragoon. We've got Machinist. We got a Mana Lane. Well, well, if I'd known what a social gathering this would turn on to be, I would dress for the occasion. Still, it seems to be the perfect opportunity to mingle with the other guests. Would it be correct in assuming those ladies over yonder as Sirna and Sadu to step? Hmm. Perhaps I should introduce myself. Though I don't don't like the look of that fellow with the enormous axe. Yeah, I probably want to avoid it. Maxima, uh, in this uh, Stormblood, he he was with Asahi and then eventually defected over to Eorzea after. Well, the Emperor tried to shoot him down and kill him. I cast my lot with the Populares to, to bridge the divide between Garlemal and her territories, and all may be united in a common cause. But we have disparaged by a radical element, dissenters looking to destabilize the Empire from men. Many friends and even my parents perished in unfortunate accidents. I too would surely have met the same fate had I not defected. Nevertheless, I still dream of equality and peace for all. As the world itself stands on the brink of collapse, I hold out hope that one day that dream will become reality. Uh, Chuchuto! She is a pugilist. Uh, she and Master Hamon are our guides uh, for pugilism. 
which eventually leads to Monk. I'm so glad that I found you! I have for you a letter from Master Heyman. Uh, let's read it together, shall we? Now, let's see. Ahem. <clears throat> I have every confidence that your fish shall bring the Tlafuri to their knees, and should you espy any beautiful maidens there bow, perhaps sing to them my praises? Charming master. Well, more full, full of me for thinking the letter would contain something actually inspiring. Let's just um, forget this note exists and focus on the battle ahead. We have Lise. Lise. Former Scion. A fellow monk. Yeah, let's battle stance it. That is set of voting scales I spy. Now that I would not that I know what they look like. Uh yes they are. Wow, look at these. Even a layman like me can tell they're bursting with ether. All the better to fend off the tempering waves? Is that the right term? Anyway, they'll give us no less one less thing to worry about, which we just leaves the other mountain of whatever else is waiting for us in Garlemald. Only one way to find out, eh? And nervous or not, I'll march through all seven hells if it gave me a chance to put Xenos back in the grave where he belongs. <laughs> Pippin! Okay, this is kind of a spoiler. Now, look at this. He has a uh, Raubon sword. He carries it on his back. It is... Which is a one-handed, you know, paladin sword. This is like... This is kind of the thing that... Uh, because Raubon actually was kind of like a two-handed paladin, really. He was a gladiator. And everything, but that sword, which was Rabon's sword, which he uh, handed down to to Pippin, his adopted son. Yeah, a Highlander, uh, a Highlander here uh, ended up with a uh, Lalafell uh, uh, adopted son. But that's huge. It's on his back instead of you know, like look at me, looking as a gladiator slash paladin. My swords on my side on the sheath. For me, when I, my sword is on my back, it's usually a lot bigger, and I'm a Dark Knight. So I'm going to call Pippin to be our Dark Knight representative. Often has father told me of the struggles faced by Alamigo in the days of occupation. I too have crossed swords with the Empire on many occasions. Though Gardamod has long been a bitter enemy, her grace has, grace has elected to bolster the Ilzabad contingent with members of the Immortal Flames. As representatives of the Sultanate, we are, we are one in our commitment to the cause. Kokobuki here and uh, these two are brothers, and they are our thaumaturgers. So, so there are precursors to uh, a black mage. We came as quickly as we could. We would follow your example and devastate the Talafari for the full extent of our powers. Worry not for your brothers, Boosie. Worry not for your brothers, Boosie. We will return soon enough. Boosie is uh, their brother who doesn't really have aptitude to be a thaumaturge. Uh, but, great optimist. Bronhar! Bronhar here is somebody we meet through the Marauder quest on our way to Warrior. I'm here representing the Marauders Guild, and it's my job to to keep the Smiths out of harm's way. Right. Mind you, with them hammers of theirs, we can put up a fair fight themselves. With a bit of luck, they'll be this will be over and done with before we we know it. Maybe when this is all over, we can pay the axe master a visit. He still tells. All these new recruits about the time when you killed Gujata. Gujata. And avenged that boy's parents. Ah, I remember it like it was yesterday. 
All right, we got Sicard here, who is part of MSQ. Uh, he was the one who's uh, stealing uh, uh, crystals from the Kobolds, um, which made relations with the Kobolds. This was like uh, uh, post-Shatterbringers MSQ. It was really recent. And after having to do a or almost having a duel, or having a duel, with, uh, uh, Mirrorwib. Hilfer came on, uh, basically smacked him upside the head, and what the fuck are you doing? Doing and basically super chastised him, so. Uh, you got some force. Wording scales. Ah, uh, them scales everyone's been talking about. Pretty little things, ain't they? Rock now be worth a kill or two when this is all over, but we'll hold on to them for for now. And one more thing. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't they send Enza? Enza instead. Bugger if I know. All the Emerald Captain here first told me was that they needed somebody to help safeguard the future. And here I am. Can't say they haven't got a sense of humor. Of course, some of you might be wondering what good a pirate is to dry land in the middle of the sun and snow of all places. Well, me and my crew do whatever needs doing, so let's set sail on whatever that saying goes on their ships. We have Alka He is our guide to being a scholar. Yes, he's a marauder, but he is also a marine, uh, trained by uh, the people of Nim. Greetings, Emigos. It's time has come for us marines to show our valor over the black battlefield. All who see us will know our name and quake before our might. To victory come hell or high water! Yeah. There's a shield, which I can't cast on you because you're not part of my party or something. Anyways. Uh, and uh, it's a Rosanna, who is a seer of Gradania. And while he mentioned his sister's... Okay. Elder Seedseer, uh, a Rosanna... Or, no, a Rosanna is him. Connie Sena. And Rioa. Reoa is the one that does the, the white mage quests. The guys that sell the white mage quests. Yes. So these are the famed warding scales. Enough for me and my men, I see. I myself am especially grateful for this opportunity to visit the distant lands. I wish to follow in the footsteps of Master Atawa. Atawa. Uh, well, I think it's Atawa, because it's, he says his name is Abram. Anyways. And then all there is to learn of this star we call home. Indeed, this is the primary reason I volunteered to join the expedition. To journey outside the Twelve Swift. Much less enter into Imperial ter territory is a rare privilege afforded to Pajol. Now that I'm, not that I'm taken along to see the sights, the Guardians would benefit from my healing magics, and would, uh, as would our comrades, should fighting break down. By the way, he may look like a boy, but he's a Pajal. See the room? He, he may look like a, a Hure, but he's got those horns on his head. Uh, this is a, a rare phenomenon choice chosen of the elementals. Uh, they la live forever. I think it's like 28 or something. He, he's not old per se, but he looks like he's like 15. You know, he's, or, um, Alphano is like 16, 17, something like that. He's 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 young. Young. I mean, the, the reason why he's so short versus Astinian or Oriange. Oriange didn't really grow to that tight until he was about 20. Well, he's Possibly older than Oriange, but he's shorter and looks a lot younger, and that's because he's a Pajal. He ages a lot slower. All right, so next up, we've got 
Sensen. And... Gedelet. I don't... Gedele... Gidela. Gidelo? I don't know. Something like that. He is a bard. Sensen, in the meantime, uh, is is the guy who uh, is also these two these two knuckleheads. After once you get to uh, the after level fifty, basically all through Heaven's Ward and Stormblood, they're the ones that that are the um, in, in the level eighty uh, job quests. They're the ones that are are, are, are bard guides. Let's talk to them. I can't lie, I'm a ghost. I have entirely for the whole was entirely for this whole thing when Samson spoke to me. But if it means being your brother in arms, then who am I to, pe uh, to pettifog? I never heard that term. I shouldn't be too hard on him. I suppose this bard unit is quite impressive, really. Yes, one must give credit where credit is due. Rather than good for one to do do otherwise. Otherwise, after all. So that's really the only thing I can do. That prowess has, has finally been recognized by the Order of the Twin Adder. Naturally, get get a low, get a low, get a low, maybe get a low, guide a low, guide a low. Is also here. Naturally, guide a low is also here helping us. Well, his ability as a bard is a. Unmatched, I do worry about his his judgment. However, you need not. I shall be keeping a close eye on him, I promise. Alright. So, so sadly, we don't have any... See, Alka-Zokal kind of, kind of covers two categories, because Scholar, and then, then Summer would, would also be kind of... There's reasons for that, Helm. Don't worry about it. Um, Al Altazoka, because they, they're Arcanists. So I suppose that would be it. We have our warrior. We kind of have our paladin. Because Pippin kind of covers that. And then cover uh, Because that's really kind of the Gardanian. Or not Gardanian. The Old Dawn. Uh, thing. And we have... Uh, but he's playing Dark Knight only because the sword is too big to be to, to for him to to wield it one-handed. So that he could paladin. Because I think he was a paladin job change recently after he got his sword from his dad. Uh, we have no samurais, I don't think. Do we samurais? No. We do have Rostic here, who is a gunbreaker. Ah, Radovan student! I hear from a certain student since student of my own, you've been being kept rather busy of late. You might be wondering why a Barshan would want to aid the Gallians. It's simple. I'm a gunbreaker. My duty is to defend. The way I see it, the civilians of the capital are in, more are in need of more protection, and so that's what I'll do. What I just do? We don't have any astrologians. Or Unless you count Orianje, I suppose. Anyways, let's, let's talk to everybody here. Magni of the Step. With them all, champions of the Dardom and the Dothral, having sent so many here, I had thought to defend the Step in their absence. And I would have done so if not for my Step. For my stepbrothers, they urged me to grant our allies the sun's might, that his radiance may deliver them unto victory. Though I must tolerate the presence of this feral Dothrali dog, as few among as few among my brothers, I would do no less than accept this challenge. My deeds will become the stuff of legends. I care not for the Iron Men or their troubles. It is the destiny of the weak to die in ignominy. Even so, I will do as I have 
uh, have agreed. I volunteered to join this band at Serena's request, and if she thinks it is a worthy cause, that is reason enough. Though we hail from different tribes, our bond has grown strong of late. She is much better company on a hunt than any of the steppes ocean's men men could be. Talk to Serena. We heard it would be cold in Garlemont, so we came, came prepared. Ah, the talismans. We are to keep these close at all times, yes? I will see that no one misplaces theirs. Ah, and before I forget, I have a message from Hien. In distant land, in times of strife, together stand, together fight. In darkness shines the light of life. I hope I have done these words justice. Doma, like much Vantar, has been plagued by the towers. Yet while he could not be here, we, he wished to express his shared conviction. Hien and Yigiri, we labor without rest to unite the people, and with their aid will we keep the enemy at bay. And we of the steppe and the eastern lines will repay their efforts by ending this war. Alright. Last but not least. You have a world in scale for me, too. Thank you for this, and going mm, to such incredible lengths for the sake of my people. By the way, from this entire thing, um, I think this is one of the reasons why, while you would go through, pretty much go through MSQ, but mainly on just one job, um, it's designed to be that way. Everything else is alternative, and you love those separately. This is one of the reasons why you would level all the jobs. Maybe you're not much of a fan, um, especially when you can get up to uh, level 71 and start doing trusts. And then there's a few things like like doing the MSQ uh, roulette. Uh, it's super easy. You don't really have to think much, even as like a tank or a healer. I mean, gets kind of familiar with it, and just kind of like well, along the way. But getting them up, and then you can get all these references. It's great. You don't have to necessarily be good at all the jobs. Just love them. Thank you for this and for doing so much incredible likes for the sake of people. Though I have little to offer in return, I would impart some advice, if I may. You have been told by many to wear the cold of Is Ish Ilzabad, and I cannot stress enough that this is no token warning. It will be, it will be disturbingly... Dis I will be distributing specially made warming tinctures, courtesy of the Alchemist Guild, but understand that they are no substitute for proper protection. I leave the provisioning of said protection to your discretion. Now let us proceed to the Alamegan Quarter. While you make your final preparations, I will have the pilots ready the airships.
There. Ooh, I need a repair. So, just to say, basically, I changed into something that, compared to my other, the other design, uh, is more likely to be warm. <laughs> well, I probably could have kept the size. We'll just leave it. Uh, what does the home look like? Like that. I can't see my face, so where go where? This is our last ch chance to make ready before we set forth. You needn't worry about our Yanji and I. We still have what we wore to call him out before. Estinian claims to be quite warm and toasty and beneath his armor, and since he's spent a fair bit of time up north recently as well, I have no reason to doubt his words. Most of the others will be borrowing Grand Company stock. The rest of you could do likewise, I suppose, provided you're not overly concerned with style. Hmm. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I wouldn't be t seen dead in one of those ridiculous overcoats. If only I have time to find something to my liking. Hawk, is that the cry of the science in need of a tailor, I hear? Tataru. But, but how? <laughs> I have my ways. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. You thought you could sneak off to Ilzabad without telling me? Ha! Nothing escapes my notice. Now, you will wear these garments I made for you, whether you like it or not. You never cease to amaze. But why do you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? What? No, of course not, silly. It's all in the name of fashion. Well, in the pursuit of the highest quality fashion. Besides, how can I expect others to wear my creations if I've never worn them myself? <laughs> ah, I did have one other thing to share. Egermas and Blumwida have finally returned from Simon's in faraway lands. They'll be staying in the Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events throughout Eorzea. Since they'll be running things back at headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlene. Oh, why not? You could help Kral keep Kral company in the Baldessi next Annex. Yes, we'd love to have you there, and I heard Umgus and Blumira. <laughs> Uh, did a fine job carrying on in our stead while we were lining, co were lining comatose. With them in charge of the Rising Stones, we have nothing to worry about. My thoughts exactly. Also, while I'm confident you won't be collapsing again, because a certain person who shall remain nameless is in the position to transport your souls to another world, it is anything similarly disastrous were to happen, I'd be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I got a few things to take care of, and then I'll make my way to Charlene. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm in Garlemald. It's not not much, but it's the only thing I can do for you. For you other than pray for your safe return, which I will, every day. Let's not keep the contingent waiting any longer. Here are your winter woolies, handcrafted by yours truly. We get the North Sea coat. Mm -hmm. 
So first things first. Before we continue here. We gotta dye the coat. Then... Glamour it. Onto our current. Yeah, I just unglamoured it, but... There we go. Here's Tataru. Tataru. So basically we're just saying this is over what I was wearing. Tataru is desperately trying to retain her composure as she continues to see you off on another perilous journey. I'm told the airship pilot has been sent to meet you. Oh, there he is. All right, there's. This is where we go our separate ways. Do be careful, won't you? All right, just for fun, ease. I'm going to do a few uh, XP enhancing benefits because apparently. For many of us, it's something of a homecoming. Our illustrious founder is only more notable imperial defector. For that reason, the company is committed to the success of this expedition. Our resources are at your disposal. If there is what you might, we might do to further assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. If you are ready to depart, we will ready the engines. Upon boarding the airship, several cutscenes will play in sequences. Recommended that you set in, set aside significant time to view these scenes in their entirety. What time is it? It's only 1.38. I feel like I've been playing for two hours. At least, if not two and a half. Alright, hold that thought. There's a couple things I want to do quickly here. I'll be right back. I gotta go to the title card because using OBS, I haven't set that up. So, be right back. Remind me, I need to see it. set it. Be right back on the uh, scene up for. Here we go. In addition, you'll be required to participate in battle. Your progress will be saved at certain points. In the event you are defeated, you will be able to try again for the most recent of these. Please note that you enter battles associated with other quests or log out from the game. This project would be lost.
Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly? On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius, Winds howl in icy protest, as if to warn against further trespass. We've received word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. They've sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps? Perhaps, but there is more to it than that. Maxima reports that they're led by Vagilia, Legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus's death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the Civil War. Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? If me and my crew is out reaving, we charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald, the very ones we have come to aid. Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings, disarmament and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. Having observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments, and once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel and likely force the detachment to send men to investigate. Divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the Scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rearguard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak.
Your proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperials' toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. Miss Stoller always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. All right, once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's Magitech with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Our second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much needed upper hand. The blizzard will help us stay hidden, so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. Trust in the plan, and we should all live to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the lone wolf? Wouldn't have it any other way. Call it foolish and reckless if you like, but I'll get the job done. I always do. Very well. I wish you the best of luck. Keep your wits about you. It's time. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count.
This is Thancred. The explosives are in place. Very good. All is proceeding as planned. Head to the control terminal. It should be to the northwest. Understood. Have the others wait at the rendezvous point. I was saying so many things that I was muted. I apologize about that. That was my best one yet! Except for that thing. You are returned, and none the worse for wear, to my considerable relief. What news from our comrades? They stand at the ready. Excellent. And let the fireworks begin. A few moments later, the rear of the Ilzabad contingent caravan, the supply caravan. The blizzard's beginning to clear. The vanguard should be engaging the Imperials any moment now. If they haven't already. Ishtola and the others are with them, so I'm sure they'll be alright, but... Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages! We lose those, and we're as good as dead! Here we go!
I don't think I've played Reaper yet. Fighters! Protect the others! Carriage is safe. Display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. I'm ready for more. Hear that? Get to the front and turn the tide. Meanwhile, in the front line...
Remove from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. It's nothing that won't heal. In time. The trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? That I did. Gilia! Damn it! I need to help the others take her down. There's no end to them! I was wondering when you'd turn up. There's no stopping us now. Come on, let's show them what we're made of. Light party. We have them now. Forward.
There we go. The adversary. Rest, recover, reclaim yourself. Then we will fight again to the death. Sadu Hatun. That was the last of them. The day is ours, thanks to your timely arrival. What of the supply caravan? Yeah, they're fine. Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. You gotta have a little bit of humor along with the seriousness of this. That you going. <laughs> so cold and unforgiving. Thus spoke Empress Solace as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kovosi, after centuries of war and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of desolation, they clung to one another for warmth, freezing, hungry, desperate, hated. The Chosen Forsaken. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Solus single-handedly sparked the Magitech Revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes, far colder indeed, bitterly so. Not so much as a whisper. The roads leading beyond the city walls would have been used less in recent years. Nevertheless, this was one of the most important gateways into the capital. A buzz day and night with activity, aye. Merchants passing through the checkpoint, many of them stopping at the local hostelries. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. 
The tempered Imperials too. This will be our temporary base of operations. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone. Lizzie has a great commander. She was perfect commander for this contingent. No first things first. She was the answer. <laughs> In spite of the obstacles we faced, our plan proceeds apace, just a little further and we'll reach the capital itself. Still, we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. As soon as the camp has been made fit for purpose, we are to discuss a course of action with Lucia. Would you mind asking Yashvala and Graha to join us in the building to the northeast of the camp? Elise and I will meet you there. Keep in mind, they were saying this is really busy and etc. But you look around, there's like only a few buildings. In reality, if we were actually really in this place, it'd probably be a lot more buildings, bigger streets, and be a bit bigger. A meeting? Yes, I'll make my way over once my head has cleared. In truth, I've been feeling out of sorts since we arrived. They are in a stick with, pub with a palpable aura from the middle of the night. There's a mist. There's the monstrous tower on the horizon, jagged, hideous, unholy. Even at this distance, its presence is overwhelming. Much like the sensation I felt in the Tower of Zot, only far more terrifying, ether flows unceasingly towards it, converging in swirling mass of unfathomable power. For blessing, the constant chill in the air is helping to anchor my senses in, in the here and now. Tell the others I shall be with you in a few moments. You will be pleased to know most of the intempered have been quartered inside the nearby buildings and are receiving treatment as we speak. I do, however, feel no small amount to have guilt for commandeering civilian homes. The occupants may be long gone, but everything is exactly as they left it. Clear my throat. Considering the length of time that has clearly passed since since one would expect to find them ransacked. Strangely, there are no signs of anything having been stolen. Possible that everyone fled at the first sign of trouble, but it seems that to me they left far too many useful, useful possessions behind. Aye, although there is no conclusive evidence, I strongly suspect they were tempered. Sorry, I'm really thinking aloud. You mentioned a meeting. I will make my way there. Thank you for informing the others of our meeting. When everyone is here, we will begin. Our present situation is as follows. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city, for therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Telophoroi's designs. I have a suggestion, if I may. 
Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members of the Popularis and acquaintances of mine. Once we have cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events leading to the capital's downfall. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and the administrations. Of course, I will require a porxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it will be prudent for me to remain within the camp. This talk of curing the tempered is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. All the houses round here are fitted with ceruleum eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. My smiths reckon with the right parts, they can have them working again, but it won't be easy. Understood. The machinists will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. We've made our presence known to the Telophroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Uriange, Estinian and myself have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well now, this is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service. Though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. That leaves us with guard duty. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphano. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhine. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in navigating the ice fields. Are there any survivors? We'll surely find them. Nice guy. I have faith that you will, and look forward to greeting you on your safe return. You all have your duties. Let us make haste. May the Fury bless and keep you. Well, to be good if it's this cold with Tataru's clothing. <laughs> I dread to think how we'd fare without it. Must remember to think of it when next we meet. It makes me realize too that while the people of Galmal have spent their whole lives in conditions like this, even though they'd be hard pressed to survive away from the warmth of their homes, if there are any survivors, we must find them in quickly. Oh, 
What ho, chums? Been given something to do, have you? As it happens, I too have been ordered to make myself useful. Sounds like a rather tall order. Uh, ahem. Since you ask, ask where to scour the Eblin mine for, for survivors. What? Wander around the ice fields and off chance you'll find someone? You'll take forever to finish the job without the benefit of my expertise, or more specifically, my telescope. Come friends, I know just the spot to begin our search. We'll probably regret this, but we may as well humor him. I see an Eblin bear, it is dead. Okay. First things first. Take the curtain. Spy with my little telescope, a massive sheep thing, or maybe it's a cow. I'm not that weird after either way. Is that an ether guard? Oh no, that's a wood. Ah, no, that's a wood. Uh, other than that, it's all snow, snow, snow. Below? What do I always see? Blah, blah, blah. It's no mistake, it is. That's a girl. A survivor? Show me. Over there, behind that tree. Looks like she's ready to wave for something, though surely not us. She wouldn't even know we're here unless she has a telescope like a mine. All I can tell is that she's wearing a pale green dress. Rather fetchy one at that. She'll be long gone by the time we get anywhere near, but we'll be able to follow her footsteps. I'll let Lucia know that you, where you're heading. Oh, and take these warming tinctures with you. The poor girl must be chilled to the bone, if not to the on the verge of freezing to death. That's actually very thoughtful. Thank you. And won't you need some for yourself? No, no, I'm fine. As a man of chivalry, my honor demands that I do no less. Unless you forget the very reason we are here to protect those in need. Now go! Godspeed. Trail of fresh footprints lead east. These footprints appear to be the same as those you saw previously and lead toward the building. We're getting closer, I'm sure of it. At first we thought she'd gone inside the building, but the door doesn't look like it's been opened in some time. She might still be nearby, so we'll keep looking around here. Then again, it's also possible she just ran past this place. Would you mind searching up ahead? 
And what else is searching up ahead? Here she is. On the green dress, anxiously surveys her surroundings. For you to call out her from this distance might attract wild beasts to our location. It'd be safer to get closer first, but you must do so without drawing her attention. Oh, finally. the door from a safe distance. The objective will end in failure if you are noticed. Make sure make use of covers such as rocks to approach her without being seen. Similarly, the objective will also end in failure if you fall too far behind. Should you fail to complete the objective, you may try again by returning to the designated location. Done for. Oh, that guy failed. My luck holds. Gotta keep going. They're all depending on me. A little farther. And this is inversion sound thing that they that you can get. Uh, it's kind of creepy because I heard that rose so many times. I think this is the final stretch. Yeah, it is. Here we are. Today complete. Phew, still in one piece. Oh, hi. Ooh. 
Who are you? Stay back. This house is passed with explosive. Take another step and I'll blow this place sky high. What? <laughs> Please, we just want to talk. After I do all this work, and then you just run up. My sister Alize, and this is our good friend Emigos. You have no intention of hurting or taking anything from you or any, anyone else. I give you my word. We are... We and our comrades have come to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. Aid? You savages are the one responsible for all of this? You did this to us. We did, I promise you. One of the other reasons we came was to find out what happened here, in fact. The Tlofra are the ones to blame. They're the ones who laid waste to Garlemald, and we won't stop until we've destroyed... And they won't stop until they destroyed the entire world. They're the enemy. Our enemy. On our way, we encountered Imperial soldiers who have been made their thralls. The, those poor souls are now in our care, and we are striving to cure them in our affliction. You're the first people... We've met who haven't already been enslaved. How were you able to escape the Tlofra's influence? Are there any others like you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to overwhelm you. Let's start with the directions. Can you tell me your name? My name is Visenia. As for how I've managed to stay sane, I've been asking myself the same question ever since that night and the roar, that terrible roar. Then the screams. I was screaming too, I think. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Then came the silence. Everything was still. It was like waking from a nightmare. I thought that maybe the fighting had stopped, so I stepped outside. If, if your hells are real, I saw one that day. I ran, past friends, people I'd known in my life, eyes vacant, dead, staring at the sky. Others were mad and violent. I saw them struggle with soldiers, but didn't stay to watch. I fled as far as my legs would take me. Do you have family here? Is this their home? This is Victor's Spoils, a mansion for retired tired soldiers. Or it was, but now me and my me and a few others are um borrowing it. As for the explosives, I was making that up. I just wanted to keep everyone safe, and I don't know if you were Truth is our supplies are running low. You said you were here to help, can you? Of course, whatever assistance we can provide, we will. Thank you. I'd better tell the others first, though. Wait here. A few minutes later. This is everyone. Lucinia sa said you could be trusted, but these are desperate times. We'd be fools to let foreign troops into our home. Having said that, were you... You to provide us with a means of heating the place, as a sign of goodwill, perhaps we could take you at your word. If that's too much to ask, then leave us be. Time to put uh, my firewood gathering skills to use. Could you provide the spot for a little magic, Alize? You can get a fire burning in no time. May we build, build under that gazebo? The what? Oh, you mean the bower. Yes, yes, do as you will. His inner turmoil is rock plain on her face. Mm, sorry, I was just finding it hard to come to terms with all that. 
that's happened. Now that you're here, though, I'm hoping things might change for the better. You know, I've worked up quite a sweat from all that running about, so I'll leave space around the fire for the others. As you can tell, there's a far, they're in a far worse state than me. I'm planning to look for something warmer or, or with more food, but they're not going anywhere until we nurse them back to health, which I don't know how to do. Is there anything you can do to help? Yeah, sure. I just want to say, this music's kind of creepy. We can treat the frostbite and the wounds, but it will take time for the fire to do its work. Now, now would be a good occasion to make use of Menelaine's tinctures, the ones that can warm the body from the inside out. Would you make sure everyone gets one? The moment is beginning to subside, though I suspect once the fire dies, it will return with a vengeance. Yeah, you have a warming tincture. Warming tincture? I've never heard of such a thing. No harm in trying. But tell me, have you heard aught of the city? Though calling it that seems absurd after what happened. It's nothing but ruins now. A few buildings still standing offer no more than meager protection from wind and snow. Food Food production, water purification, the magic tech that sustained us has come to a grinding halt. What Machina that remains operational can't be run, be run with for lack of ceruleum, of course. Cerulea Ingus is full of the stuff, but for all the good it does us, no one here knows the first thing about extraction or refinement. All's well. Yes, never better. No, oh, what sweet libation is this? Is it poison by any chance? Ah, <laughs> it was a joke, a joke. <laughs> I laughed is what I may... I laughed is that I may not weep, so said the poet. Alas, my tears would freeze on my cheeks where they fall. We are the blessed damned. Damned to bear witness to the fall of the great empire. While our brethren lie dead, or live on as puppets of flesh. First came the war, then came the roar, then morning came, and Garlemar, Garlemar was no more. In a cacophony of gunfire, explosions, and screams was our beloved capital, the capital raised to the ground. From the rubble rose the disheveled remnants, the lavish finery caked in ash as they shuffled mindlessly toward the palace each bearing a fragment of stone or metal, an offering perhaps to the architect of our destruction. A hopeful few tried to reason with the deranged, only to be beaten for their kindness. But I knew better than to plead with the horde. I fled with my health, if not my conscience preserved. Now I wait for, with my fellow cowards for our final judgment. What do you want? Hmm, a tincture. Maybe we'll drink it, I suppose. Yes? It's radio. You don't have them where you come from, I take it. Use them to listen to messages sent by others, even over great distances. There are different types, but this model is by far the most popular. Made with quality components crafted from the finest ore sourced from Locus and Benes. That is. Not all that useful since the capital fell in ruin. The people at the broadcasting station must have either fled or ended up like all the others. Because all we've been hearing is the same music being played over and over again. Home Beyond the Horizon. Ode to the brave men and women sent to reclaim our ancestral homeland of Locos and Menace. We may have founded an empire in the frozen ways, but we always hope to take back what was once ours. As a solemn reminder that though we must suffer a great hardship, better days will surely come. 
Despite everything, I believe the Empire, that Emperor Var Varus still lives, and that he speaks to us through our radios. It was a cunning strategy, faking his murder. He must have foreseen his catastrophe and chosen to conceal himself, that he may one day make his triumphant return. Yes, yes, I'm sure of it. Emperor Varus would not be defeated so easily. Um... Oh, I got a wormy thing there for you. This is what you gave the others? Thank you. I'll save it for later. Actually, I have a few th things to ask you. Sure. Are you part of the group staying in Litrum? Cloud Legatus for Regilla's troops heading towards the Magna Glacius a few days ago. Are they the ones you encountered? Yes, uh... We defeated them and brought them to what we call Kept Broken Glass. Oh, Broken Glass and Virginia and Men are all there now? Hmm. So, how did you reach the Magna Glacius? Did you cross the mountains on foot? No, oh, we used airships. Airships? And there might be a way to... Lucinia? Where is everybody? Is something the matter? Yeah, I heard the voice coming from inside. Voice from inside, you say? You must be imagining things. Everyone's out here. Perhaps a baby Elmasti has found its way into the, the house. It wouldn't be the first time. Without the soldiers to scare them off, wild animals had been roaming closer to the settlements. Some have been known to attack people, too. I just had an idea. If you and yours are strong enough to beat a Legatus, then surely a few beasts won't, shouldn't pose a threat. If you mind, if you have a mind to continue helping us, perhaps you could head to the other side of the lake. There's a small group of tappers living there. People whose job was to extract ceruleum. They still do, and from what we from what we can tell. I've already tried asking if they would share their fuel with us, but they're not willing to give it away. They want food in exchange. Lots of food. And that's something we don't have and can't get on our own. On top of that, to eat, to even reach this den, you have to, to make your way past all those creatures. Would you be willing to go to our, in our place? We only need enough ceruleum la uh, to last until the others are strong enough to travel to your camp. If the offer still stands, that is. Oh, I, I don't expect you to give up your own supplies. But there might be another way to pay the tapper. Best watch out for baby El Masties while we're away. Hmm. Uh, yes, of course. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. If they see any, I'll be sure to shoot them away. To reach tappers, then you'll have to cross the lake. The ice is thick enough to support a person's weight, but if you prefer, you rather not take the risk, you need to take the long way around. Finding the entrance can be a bit tricky too, so it's easier to just look for someone standing guard, guard outside. However you decide to head there, please be careful. Hey, can, can, can you, like, go away? Something I wanted to check quickly. Oh, we're only about two and a half hours. It's a good place to, uh, to pause game. Uh, I can take a quick little break here. Mainly because I want to split the videos. The easiest thing to do is to stop streaming and start streaming. So. Alright, so we're going to stop just for a little bit. We'll come back and we'll see about getting Nathan Currents and Cerulean.